Vision should never die. I'm Dr. Quentin De Quincey, fine features, silver temples, and an enormous private practice. What am I, nurse? Oh, God, Doctor. Ruddy to God. Stop it, nurse. I'm not doing it, Doctor. It's the baby. Pity not to hear a woman scream. Now listen here, you baby. I'm a private doctor. That means I'm better, do you understand? Better. Now, stop crying. Splendid. Tell me what happens in the post. This mother was protected by Bupa. A happy birth when she wanted it. This woman had to wait 25 years for the NHS to get around to her. Bupa puts the class prejudice back into being a <laughs> Let me have your baby, Doctor. Don't be absurd, nurse. Even if I had one, do you think I'd just give it away? Oh, but we all want to marry you, Doctor. All the nurses do, even the male ones. Tonight, in the hostel, when we've all brushed our teeth and got into our sweet little baby doll nighties in pastel shades, I'll tell them what it's like to work with you, and then our cosy girlish dorm will be still, save for the soft humming of 42 vibrators. <laughs> yes. I want to hear all about that, nurse. Now then, Mr... Uh... 100% cotton. Your mother must have had a sense of humour. What seems to be the trouble? I'm not very well, Doctor. I'm damn lucky for you, you're not. I don't tolerate time wasters. We have to see his passport before we can proceed, Doctor. That's a damn topical remark, Nurse. Glad somebody's on the ball. Uh, here's the passport, Doctor. Don't look at the photograph. It's rather embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you look a tosspot with long hair? <laughs> I can't stand hippies, never could. I think they should be boiled. Didn't your father mind? He passed minding. Ah, shuffled off this mortal coil, has he? No. Dead. Oh, I am sorry. No, you're not, nurse, and you know it. Oh, doctor, you can read me like a book. Thank you. Go upstairs, bind yourself in leather, and I'll come and thumb through you later. <laughs> I was employing a metaphor. There, you see, we'll give anyone a job at this hospital, Mr. Cotton. <laughs> doctor. Yes, 100 guineas. National Health Service pay dispute. What about it? I don't know. I just thought I'd mention it. Has it been satirising like this regularly, Ned? Mentioned the Pope last Tuesday. Oh, unpleasant. Oh, now, I thought your name was 100% cotton. It says here, Biddy Barney Singh with an H on the end. It is. It is. That's a bit is. confusing, isn't it? I think I'll just call you Curry. I'm sure you'll understand that's meant in a liberal, humane and caring kind of way, Mr Curry. So, what seems to be the trouble? My leg. Everyone's a ruddy expert these days, aren't they? <laughs> been watching tomorrow's world, have we? It's your head man. It's bandaged up like an Egyptian mummy. I'm a Sikh, Doctor. I realise you're a Sikh man or you wouldn't have been here. Why are you an Italian nurse? That is the largest cerebral cancer I've ever seen. Well, that's very Lord lovely, making jokes about cancer. Why can't we have nice programmes? I have read your letter, but tell me more of your history, Miss Fenshaw. Well, sir, where would you have me begin? At the beginning, Miss Fenshaw? Well, sir, you must know that my mother died when I was born, and my father, Captain Jack Fenshaw. Mad Jack Fenshaw? Yes, sir. I believe that is what the world knew him as. Mm. He died when I was an infant, leaving my guardian, Mr. Spottiswood, an amiable gentleman in the city, nothing but debts to settle after his death. Yeah, that's Jack, all right. I was educated at Mr. Spottiswood's expense at Highfields, a charitable institution in Hertfordshire. A charitable institution in Hertfordshire? Yes, sir. A charitable institution in Hertfordshire, some miles from the town of Royston. The town of Royston, you say? You haven't exactly, Sir William. Please go on, Miss Fenshaw. I spent many happy days at this charitable institution in Hertfordshire, some miles from the town of Royston, and indeed, within happier walking distance of the towns of Hitchin and Stevenage, though too far from Hadley Wood that makes quite a pleasant walk. I see you know your hearts well, Miss Fenshaw. At Highfields, I was taken under the care of a Miss Bedlow, a kindly lady of reduced means. A Miss Agnes Bedlow? No, indeed, sir. A Miss Constance Bedlow. And when you left the care of this Miss Constance Bedlow? Under Mr. Spottiswood's direction, I assumed a number of positions abroad. I left the employ of one of Germany's reigning houses under a cloud. Then I joined the household of Sir Robert Carver, only to have to leave after one of his sons tried, tried, tried to force his attentions upon me. <laughs> Upon leaving the household of Sir Robert Carver, I returned to find that my guardian, Mr. Spottiswood... Uh, the amiable gentleman in the city. Yes, indeed, sir. Mm -hmm. The amiable gentleman in the city, who was my guardian, had died, leaving me no provision under his will save a letter of introduction to you, sir, 
That letter you now draw from your bosom. And now you know my story. It is a story that moves me greatly, Miss Fenshaw. Jane, I knew your parents well. Your mother was an angel and your father was a dog. <laughs> so Cousin Bethel wasn't mad. You yourself were not wholly indifferent to my mother's beauty in earlier times. You, you were in love with her a bit, I fancy. Yes, I fancied a bit too. <laughs> I loved her, Jane. I loved her with all the passion that beat in my young breast. Breast? breast. <laughs> I should have married her if your father had not stepped in and ruined everything. I am sensible of that, sir. Sensible? Deeply sensible. How sensible? Deeply, deeply sensible. <laughs> Jane, let me look at you. You have your mother's eyes, I think. Yes, sir. In my reticule. I keep them with me always. <laughs> so now, after all these years, Kitty looks to me for her child's protection. <laughs> Jane, there is only one position in my household for Kitty's girl, I believe you can guess. Oh, sir. Hush now, how soon may I expect an answer? Oh, sir William, I must give it to you now. Yes, yes, a hundred times yes. Jane, Jane, Jane. <laughs> the sculleries are downstairs. Mrs. Meeks will give you a uniform. Oh. Excuse me, sir, has this woman been wheedling her way into your affection? Certainly not. Oh. She seems to have been doing a spot of wheedling from where I'm standing, sir. Well, she hasn't. My mistake, then, sir. Just thought it might have been Wheedlin Wilhelmina. Famous German wheedler, that's all, sir. Extraordinary. I'm back now, Sarge. That's what I like to see, a good old-fashioned bobby. <laughs> All right, then, son, let's go over this again now, shall we? You were in a pub. Yeah, and uh, there'd already been a certain amount of iffiness over who was going to buy the drinks. Oh, yes. Well, we both wanted to pay, see? It, it was a matter of honour. I mean, we both come from Kilburn. And as far as I'm concerned, Kilburn is Kilburn. I mean, you can say what you like. I don't care, but Kilburn is Kilburn, and no one better so different while I'm around. A bloke once said to me, right, Kilburn is gold as green. What? Should have seen the other fella. <laughs> Fancy a pot noodle? <laughs> Perkins, two pot noodles. Go on, lad. Well, uh, we was uh, down the Jolly Dildo, right? No, I tell a lie, we was having a drink in the obvious studio set, and uh, I was up there and Wally comes up. Yeah, that's right. Four pints of knuckle dust to doll, and you've got a terrific bum. Up yours. Yeah. I reckon this barmaid must be a lesbian. <laughs> so, here's the, uh, what's the 350? Here, put your money away, Wally. I'll get these. Do me a favour. It's my round. There you go, doll, and one for yourself. Give him his money back, doll. It's my shout. Listen, do you want to wake up with a crowd round you? Like hospital food, do you? I hope your mum can sew, cos she's going to have to stitch you up. One teeth in a basket, do you? <laughs> Are you talking to me or chewing a brick? Cos either way you'll get your teeth broke. All oh, right, you pay for them. Puff! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did tell you I come from Kilburn, didn't I, Sarge? Not bad, is it? Not like food at home, though. I reckon my missus cooks up the best pot noodle in Britain. Do you know how many I have of an evening? Six. <laughs> Two of each flavour. And on a plate, not out of a pot. Can't touch my missus. I'll tell you what, though, lad. I can. <laughs> I can touch her anywhere I like, I can. Anywhere I like, I can touch her, and I'll tell you what, though, lad. I do. <laughs> I'll bet you do, Sarge. Whoa. I like you, lad. Perkins, two more. <laughs> Corn Provencal flavour. <laughs> uh, by the way, Sergeant, what is the charge? Well, the original complaint was talking in a very loud voice in a public place, and then uh, the more serious one of under mental age drinking. But uh, <laughs> you seem like a nice bright lad to me, so I think I'll drop him. Bit like your missus, eh, Sarge? <laughs> Four. That's right, son. Four. <laughs> anyway, what happened next, then? Well, um, oh, we had another 65 pints, but we wasn't pissed. I mean, take more than that. <laughs> and, uh, 
Then Mr. Lovey, who does our TV adverts, came up. What, adverts? Oh, yeah, yeah. I thought I'd seen you somewhere before. Well, you know. <laughs> so is it always something that I've wondered about with them adverts? What is it that they do with the uh, the bog roll? Is it, do they tie two and three together? Precious oh, jelly deals, thank have I found you. There's a rush job on, new ad. We have to shoot it here. <laughs> what, do an advert oh, here, in our own clothes? Oh, to save a life, mushrooms? Well, I don't know, Mr. Lovett. I, I think we're all pretty anxious to maintain a difference between our real social persona and our perceived media stereotypes. Oh, There's no oh, time, oh. beetroots. If a busy schedule is a day at the seaside, then you're looking at a month in the Caribbean. Oh. Look, it's a new product, it's a new image, it's something totally different. What we're drinking then, lads? It's in front of you. Well, it's a funny shaped glass. Supposed to be. A very light colour. Just drink it. All right. <laughs> By yuck, that's the stuff. Told you. <laughs> But don't you think you could do something a little more tough and uncompromising with the bottles? What sort of something urgent, something vibrant, something out, thrusting? Out, yeah, squeeze it a bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, work on it. Improvise. Come on now. Mm. Hey, listen, you're a camera crew, aren't you? I knew you were because of the camera. That's how I could tell. Listen, I'll get straight down to it. I'm in the importing fabrics business, right? And somebody has just got to make a comedy series about the importing fabrics business. Is it just mad? Honestly, you won't believe what goes on in our place. It's just bedlam. The characters, we've got the lot. Fatties, you name it. I mean, our place is completely mad. I mean, some of the things people say, they're much funnier than on the telly, aren't they? I mean, they're real, not real. Like, only the other day, Val got decided that somebody was deliberately taking the top off her tippet, so they would come up. I mean, there's got to be a plot there, hasn't there? We died. Even old Drupy calls the boss. That's our name for him.